I want to talk about a device and app that I teased on the Facebook page the other day. You all did see that, right? Because you all have taken a moment to like my Facebook page so that you can be notified of not only new videos, but blog posts, giveaways, and lots of great information um, all over there on the Facebook page. Link is right down below. Take a moment and uh, like that, please. Now, so the other day, I posted kind of a crazy contraption picture of a camera with um, a bunch of stuff on top, including an iPhone on top of a uh, DSLR. And I wanted to talk about that today. So what I was teasing was a, um, an app called Trigger Trap. And what it does is it turns your smartphone into a really kind of nifty way to trigger, um, to take a picture with your DSLR. Now, before we jump all the way into that, I want to talk a little bit. Now, you, you may know from my other videos and other discussions that I love shooting time-lapse videos. I don't get to shoot do it as often as I would like, um, but they are a lot of fun. There's something kind of magical about time-lapse. Um, and what I usually use is something like this little intervalometer. Um, this is 13 bucks off of Amazon. This is great for shooting time-lapse. It's also great for doing family pictures. We'll talk more about that in just a second. Basically, it allows you to say every X seconds, take a picture. Every five seconds, 10 seconds, a thousand seconds. Um, and you can go up to minutes, of course, and say take a picture every five minutes or something of that sort if you really want a really long um, to create a, a time lapse that extends over a long period of time. You can also use it to control bulb mode in your camera. So you can take an exposure for more than 30 seconds. I don't know if you know or not, but the internal limit to the length of an exposure on a normal DSLR is 30 seconds. Uh, it won't keep the shutter open for longer than 30 seconds unless you're in bulb mode um, and you can hold the shutter down. That doesn't work very well though. What you really wanna do is attach um, a device like this. Um, so that you're not actually physically touching the camera and shaking it while the shutter is open. And of course, you can automatically say every five uh, minutes, take a picture for a minute in length. Star trails, uh, night photography, and things of that sort, that's where you would really want to uh, use that technique. But there is, um, in sunrises and sunsets, and so we're going to talk about why this really kind of fails at that in a moment. But I teased that I was going to talk about why this is great for family pictures um, and why the trigger trap may be even better. So you bring this device along for family pictures, and instead of using the little remote where you push and say, everybody smile, and it takes a picture, and then you stick your arm out again, you push, everybody smile, set this up to take a picture every two seconds, um, and you can tell it a limit, tell it to 10, ten pictures. And you can set a delay, don't start taking pictures until uh, five seconds. And you run over to the group and you say, everybody smile. And then it just starts firing pictures. And you get 10 pictures. Everybody's still looking at the camera. You don't have to worry about getting your arm up and down. And you can say, goofy one now, serious one, mean face, silly face. Um, and you get a nice variety of shots there that you can work with. Or you can just ask them all to just smile. You know somebody's, if you got a bigger group or a bigger family, you know somebody's, um, eyes are, are going to be shut for at least one or two of the pictures, so taking a couple more. So, so not only time lapses, but group pictures as well, quite fun. But you got to remember to bring this along with you, of course, um, um, but it does the job. Now, if we want to get fancier, this is what I'm talking about, and this is what I teased the other day on the page, and that is trigger trap. So there are a couple different parts to it. One is this little dongle, they call it, and there's a red dongle and a black dongle. You want to make sure you get the one with the red wire. That's their second version and it is most compatible with uh, all of the devices, Android and iOS. I originally um, got the black dongle and it worked fine with my iOS devices, but it did not work with my Android devices. Uh, and this is another reason why I'm talking about this company because I contacted them. They walked me through some troubleshooting steps and determined that it was um, my phone and the black dongle that weren't working, otherwise everything worked. So they sent me a new red dongle free of charge. Um, and they didn't know I was gonna review this or uh, do anything of that sort. They just thought I was a regular customer. And I was a regular customer. So I really appreciate that. So you get the red dongle. You also need the cord specific to your camera. And if anybody has questions about that when they're starting to shop, I'd be happy to find the cord for you. But um, the remote port on cameras are different. The uh, kind of the pro level cameras have a different port 
than the um, entry level DSLRs. So you, and of course, Nikon and Canon have different ports and they make cords for all of those. So this fits into here. And then the third part is the app itself that runs on your smartphone. And as I said, they have one for iOS and Android, none for Windows at the moment. Um, and I'm, I also have it running on my iPad. It is just um, blown up though, uh, just so that we can kind of easily see what's going on here. And what we have is a variety of ways to trigger your camera's shutter. And you can see that we have cable release. You just push the button, it takes a picture. There's a lot more settings down here and we'll talk about Wi-Fi um, at the bottom there in just a second as well. So you can take, make it take a picture with a clap. You can do the time lapse. And this is basically the intervalometer. It's no more smarter than that, but it is a lot easier to set up and it gives you a lot more feedback. Say I want it to take 557 photos. I want it to do that over the course of one and a half hour. So it automatically tells me that it's going to take a photo every 12 seconds. It also nicely tells me that that time lapse running at 15 frames per second is only going to last 37 seconds. Um, so you really, you can start to see why time lapses, maybe I don't shoot them as often as I would like. Um, they do take a good amount of time to do a uh, time lapse that is longer than um, just a minute or two even. So that's the time lapse. There is the time warp, time lapse with acceleration, so that it'll allow you to speed up and slow down over the course of the time lapse. Distance lapse I have tried. Um, again, I'm showing you all this on an iOS device. It is very smooth, works very well. I have been playing with it on both devices and I've noticed that on my Android phone, a Resound, um, it is a little on the buggy side. I've also played with it on a Galaxy Nexus 7. I'm sorry, not a Galaxy, a Nexus 7. Um, and it was much, much smoother. So I think it's, you know, more of a device issue um, than an OS issue. But just be warned, if you have a Resound or some other Android phones, you might find it to be a little bit buggier. Another um, bit of d difference worth pointing out is that very few of the sensor options that are available to iOS on the iOS side, uh, things like the Bang, the Seismic, the Peekaboo, those um, and motion, those are not available on Android. So um, I don't know why. I don't know if they need to do more development or if that is just not available to developers if those API calls aren't available to developers. I'm not sure. If anybody knows, please leave a comment. So definitely a more full-featured app um, and experience on the iOS device. That's important to know. Um, so uh, we were talking about the distance lap. So that is pretty slick. You can obviously set up a time lapse while you, while you drive, and it's going to take a picture every X seconds. What a distance lap lets you do, though, is it ties itself into your GPS, and you can tell it to take a picture every, here we got 250 meters, but you can obviously go up uh, much higher to uh, 1.5 kilometers, which is basically a mile. Um, so from anything from a very short distance to a much longer distance, and that's going to give you a different look than a time. If you're stuck in traffic and things of that sort, um, you're not going to subject somebody watching your time lapse to also be stuck in that traffic because it's still going to work at the same speed because it is distance triggered and not time triggered, which is pretty slick. The one that I think is uh, really exciting and that I want to talk um, a bit more about, and this is why I had it set up this way, is the facial recognition. So you run that and right now you're seeing my ceiling because um, the iPad is pointed up at the ceiling. But if I put this camera back on and we switch over to the camera where you can see me and uh, so I now have my, I have the iPhone on here and I am plugging in the remote to the camera and it's all on and in the app I'm going to do peekaboo and facial recognition and I'm going to tell it trigger on one face. So right now it sees my face, doesn't see my face, it stopped, it's not taking a picture, it sees my face. So you could set that up for three, four, five faces and once everybody is in the group and everybody is looking at the camera, the little iPhone on top, it's using the camera, the camera on the iPhone, in the iPhone, um, is watching for faces, 
It sees those, detects them, counts them, and when it hits the required number, uh, it triggers the shutter and it starts firing. Pretty slick. So, uh, there is also motion and bramping. I want to talk a little bit about bramping because, uh, mostly because I got up super early in the morning for uh, two mornings in a row. By super early, I mean about 5.30 a.m. A lot of people like to do time lapses of sunset, since we're back to talking about this device right here again. The issue with a sunrise or sunset is that your light levels change very rapidly. Uh, and if you set up a time lapse and you tell it to take a picture of, you know, 1 60th of a second for every five seconds till the sun sets, What's going to happen with a standard time lapse with no change over that uh, period of time is that very quickly your light levels are just going to go dark and you are going to get a drop off of light and your video is going to be or your video that as a result of your time lapse is going to be quite short. What you can do by bramping is you can say, well, my first exposure should be one sixtieth of a second long if we're capturing a sunset, for example. But as that light level drops, increase my exposure. So over here, I'm going to say first exposure, one sixtieth of a second. Last exposure be a full one second. And so what the, um, the brains of this smartphone are going to do now is each picture it takes is going to kind of microscopically in time extend the length of that exposure to smoothly move from one sixtieth of a second to one second. How does it do that? Because you've never seen your um, camera be able to make a s micro adjustments. You know, you go from 1 60th to 1 30th to 1 15th. Well, it can do that through the bulb mode, the bramping. You can control the length of exposure down to a really tiny fractions of a fractions of a second in, in length. The downside of this is that there's no feedback and you have to make a guess. And that's why I had to get up uh, two mornings in a row, and that was actually even after trying to catch, capture a sunset. Um, and that is, you have to say, well, over the next hour, I think the exposure levels are going to change about six stops. And so you guesstimate that it's six stops. You put that into the little Bramper device. You put it into the Trigger Trap app, and you're either right or you're wrong. On the second morning, I was much closer. I think it was actually about four stops of light over an hour. You can see that it caught some color. Um, in that and you can see that the one at the same time I ran one using the intervalometer with no change over time and you can see that that very quickly blew out just completely brightness gone not very exciting now the subjects in general here is just straight out of the office window um, at the top of the neighbor's house and um, very unexciting but what we're looking at here is the change in light levels from the intervalometer which wasn't doing any bramping, just telling it to take a picture every X seconds for so and so length, versus the bramper, which did allow for um, adjustment of exposure over that period of time. Now, if you wanna get really serious about time lapsing, sunrises and sunsets, or any kind of changing light levels, there is a great device called the Little Bramper. Um, it looks like a bomb. Um, I'll throw a picture up here so you can see it. But what it allows you to do is watch the back of the camera and so you're getting feedback. You have to stay there the whole time um, and say, well, I'm getting a little bit behind. I'm losing my exposure. And so you can kind of gradually adjust it up and down through this device. Gives you much, much better results. But it is a dedicated device that does just that. Um, and it's $100. And this all is the app is free until the end of the year. That's what they're saying. The dongle is 25 and then the camera the bit that is specific, um, I think, is in the neighborhood of 5 to $10. I'll have to double check on that, but that, I think that's um, what we're talking about. So it's a really neat little device. I think that I'll be using the distance lapse fairly often um, and the uh, facial recognition for group photos that I want to be in myself. The um, ball ramping, I think I'll be using those as well because it's... I'll you know, always have the phone with me and this little dongle and cord. I love that there's really not much extra to carry around, just that little bit, um, as opposed to the whole intervalometer or the bramper, as, a, as you saw on that photo, is um, a good bit larger. 
The one thing that I said I was going to talk about, so I'll talk about real quickly, is the Wi-Fi slave. So you could be running um, this app. And let's get back on the iPhone here. I'm going to go back to Wi-Fi. And now, oh, it's not going to find it. It's, it's set up backwards right now. The uh, iPhone is set up to trigger the iPad. Um, but what that will let you do is wirelessly, using Wi-Fi, trigger this device. So you could be in another room and make it take a picture. Uh, give me some examples of how you might use that down below. One of the things I thought is at my office, an adorable little red squirrel sits in the tree outside often. I'd love to kind of duct tape my camera to the branch, put a little nut in front of it, wait for him to come by, hit the button, and um, have it trigger. Hit the button from the comfort of my office, hit the button, and have it trigger and take a picture of the little squirrel out there. But, so, and someday, maybe I'll do that and share it with you all. So, that is Trigger Trap, the app, the dongle, camera-specific cord, really kind of nifty way, um, a lot of functionality in there, a lot more than just the intervalometer. Um, but you do have to obviously have a smartphone device, iOS or Android. If you have any questions about trigger trap, time lapses, um, bramping, which I just kind of touched on that idea, could talk about it lots more and I could point you in the direction of people that are lots more experts um, in that area than I am or general photography, please leave a comment down below, or as I said, go over to my Facebook page like that and leave a message there. I prefer to communicate on the Facebook because there's no comment limit and I can provide links. A lot of times people ask me for specific rec recommendations, um, and when I say go get such and such intervalometer, it's nice to provide a link that says, here it is. It's also nice because that allows me to use my affiliate codes. Uh, there were no ads before or during this video, and I do um, that because I find ads personally annoying. And what I would like you to do is use the Amazon links to buy things. Please, I make a small percentage, and it allows me to keep producing these videos. Thank you for watching.